Hi, and welcome to part two of this Automate Active Directory Groups tutorial series. So in the last video, I went over what the series is going to be about, and we've created an XML file, which if we just open it up here in Notepad, this is what our XML file looks like. And if you double click on it and open it up in Internet Explorer, you should have something that looks like this. So you should have the data as the root tag, and then you should have two group tags. And then within the group tag, you will have a name tag, a titles tag, and then within that titles tag, you should have uh, some title tags with the name of the position that you would like in that group. So that's what we have right now. So in this first video, we're gonna go over importing this XML file into PowerShell and validating the groups inside. So what that means, it's basically gonna make sure that the groups exist, and then it's gonna give us back a, a object uh, with like a report of the groups, whether they exist or not. And then we can actually use that to either create the groups um, or just ignore the groups that don't exist uh, because we don't want to do anything that we don't need to. Um, so let's first get started in actually just importing the file here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start by creating a variable called XML file path. And we are going to make that equal to our file path. So for mine, it's just C scripts automate ad and then we have groups.xml and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to import this now so we have to uh, initialize a variable of a type xml to make sure that it loads in properly so to do that we just do the square bracket so open and close square bracket xml and then what we're going to do is we're going to do xml data And then we are going to do a get content on the path. And the file path is going to be the XML file path. And then we are going to get started on validating this, um, this data here. So what we can do is we can do um, Uh, let's do XML data. So let's just look to see what it looks like. So here we have it. We have our data parent tag. So what we can do is do data. And then if we look in here, we can actually see that we have our group tag. So let's go into the group here. And then what we have here is we have our groups. So we have the name of the groups and then we have titles, but all we really need to focus on right now is the name of the groups. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to save this as XML groups. And we are going to save that to the XML data dot data dot group here. All right. So that is that. So now what we want to do is we want to create a variable to hold our report, we're going to call it. Um, but basically, it's going to be a status of the different groups and whether they exist or not. So we're just going to call that uh, for our sake, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a function after all of this. So in this video, we're going to go over how to validate the groups. Then at the end of the video, we're going to fit it all into a function that we can call later on. And we're going to be working on this function uh, for this video. And we're going to be adding some functionality to the function uh, later on as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a array list because we don't know how many groups potentially could be in here. And we do know from our tutorial videos um, that an array list is definitely more efficient than an array. Um, for scaling purposes. So if you have like thousands of groups, uh, the array list will definitely be more advantage. So we have system.collections.arrayList. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to create our array. And then what we want to do is we want to loop through all the groups in this XML groups. So we are going to do a for each group in 
XML groups. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run this here just so we can get our attributes in the group. So if we look at group here, we have management. So it just grabs the last group in the list, but at least we can work with that here. So what I like to do is I like to first create a variable called group name, and we're gonna set that to group.name. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the AD group for that group name. So we're gonna do AD group equals get AD group. And then we're gonna do a filter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do name. And we're gonna do a like, this way the case sensitivity doesn't matter. And then we're gonna do group name here. And then we're going to do server jacked.ca because that is our domain here. And actually what we're going to do, we are actually going to create a variable at the top here. Let's just call this domain and we're going to set this to jacked.ca just to make it easier. And then we can actually just set this here to dollar sign domain so we don't have to keep typing it. Perfect. All right, so now what we're gonna to wanna to do, now that we have our group, now we wanna make sure um, that it exists or not. So what we can simply do for that actually is just an if ad group and open and close um, curly brackets. And then let's just put in an else here for if they don't exist. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a simple write verbose for now, cause we're gonna be putting this into a function. Um, so if we ever wanna run the function and see what it's actually going on, we can just do the dash verbose to kind of see what's going on. You can do a write debug as well. Um, both of them would actually work in this case. You could also do a write host. Um, or write output, but that'll just write to the screen every time. Uh, so here we're just gonna do a group exists. And here we're just gonna do write verbose. And we're just gonna do group, group name does not exist. All right, so if we actually run all of this here, And of course we don't actually see it because it's running in verbose already. So what we are gonna do is we're actually gonna put this into our function right now. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function. We are just gonna create it right here. And actually we are gonna create it at the top because all the functions need to be loaded first. So let's create a function here and let's call it validate groups and open and close curly brackets. And then as we know from our previous videos to create a function, we need to add the commandlet binding at the top with an open and close parentheses within square brackets and then param with open and close parentheses to define parameters. All right, so we have the parameters set. So we know that for the parameters, we're gonna to wanna to take in some sort of XML data and the domain um, or the server name. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's put those in here. So let's do open and close square brackets, parameter, and we're gonna make these mandatory uh, because we need these for sure. And then we're gonna do a square uh, open and close square bracket XML because we need XML data. And then we're gonna do another parameter. And this one's also gonna be mandatory, of course. And we're gonna do this one as just a string. And we're gonna set that to server here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are actually going to copy paste all of these lines here, or just cut them actually. And we're just gonna paste them in here. 
And that should actually work out for us. Perfect. And we're just going to put this to server. And that should actually work out just fine. So now if we run this here, and at the bottom, we're going to add our validate groups XML. We are going to pass in our XML data. And then our server, we are going to pass in our domain. So if we run this here now, we still don't get anything. But if we do the dash verbose, we will see that we actually get our output. So here we can see that the group programmers does not exist and group management does not exist. So what we're going to do just for fun for now here is we're actually going to create one of those groups. Let's create the programmers group. And if we run the code again, we can actually see group exists, group management does not exist. So we're going to keep it like this for now. So we have one group existing, one group not existing. And I'm actually going to delete the programmers group afterwards. And we are actually going to create the groups by a script. Um, that's probably going to be in the next video. So now that we have our validation here, what we want to be able to do is instead of just getting uh, verbosely uh, the results here, we actually want to get an object that actually tells us what groups exist, what groups don't. This way we can use that later on programmatically to create them and we can have a log file of these. So what we're going to do um, is in our function here, we are going to want to go ahead and create a object. And what we're going to call it is we're going to call it result entry. And we're going to set that equal to a new object. And then the type name is going to be PS object here. And then we're going to do a add member. And we're going to set the input object to result entry. The member type, we're going to make that a note property. And the name, we are going to name this group name. And then the value, we're going to set it to group name. So what these two lines do is this is creating an object in PowerShell. And then the add member is creating a property for that object. So we've seen this before in the tutorial videos. Um, so it's very important that you've watched those intermediate and beginner tutorial series um, just to really understand what I'm doing here. But basically what we're doing is we're creating an object and we are just adding properties to it. This way when we pass it back, we can actually see all the data. So what we're gonna do is in this inside this if statement, we're gonna do some add members here as well. So if the group exists, we're gonna do a add member input object result entry member type is going to be a note property and then name we're going to put that to exists and we're going to do value is going to be set to true and we're just going to copy this line over to the else statement and we're going to set this to false and then what we're going to want to do is after the if statement. So after we've checked everything, we've added either it's true or false, what we're gonna to wanna to do is add that entry into the result object, because that's gonna be the object that we return back to the user. So to do that, we are gonna do a result dot add result entry. Okay, perfect. And then what we're gonna do is after the um, that is the for each loop. So after the for each loop, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and actually just put result right there. And what we can do is we can add a return there. And that way we know exactly what that is doing. So now that we have all that done, if we actually run this now, and we just expand this here. So we actually do get our verbose. We have this zero and one here, and then we have our actual object that prints out, which is the group name and exists. So we can see that the programmers group exists, 
and the management does not. So this is where this kind of comes in handy because later on in our script, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this to either um, create the groups if they don't exist or only focus on and automate the groups that do exist and give me reports that of the ones that don't. Um, so what we're going to be doing eventually is we're going to be adding a, a parameter to this function to create the groups that don't exist already uh, in order for it to just, you validate it. If I'm telling you to create the groups, if something doesn't exist, just go ahead and create it. So that's what that's going to do. Now, the reason why we get the zero and the one, it's actually the output of this add function. If you don't want to see this, which I do not, I'm going to go ahead and add an open and close bracket, square bracket here and add void, which is just going to void the output. So now if we actually run this whole script again, we can see that we only get our verbose statements and then the report. And then if we just remove the verbose statements and we run this again, we only get our report back and we can store this into a variable if we would like and then use that later on. So we've validated the XML file. So in our next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding our parameter into this validate groups to create the groups if they don't exist already. And then once we have the groups created, then we are going to go ahead and automate these groups. So we're going to take out the employees um, or users and put them in as needed um, as the XML file states based on the titles that are there. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.